Hey guys, how's it going? Justin Melson here with Happy Fox Productions, and today I want to do a quick tutorial on how to do a realistic gun effect in Adobe After Effects. So the reason I say gun effect and not like muzzle flash effect is because one, there's a plethora of muzzle flash effects tutorials on YouTube. Let's go look at Freddie W back in the day. And so what we're gonna be doing today is I have a short film called Angora Rose. We're gonna take a clip from that and I'm gonna show you guys how I composited the gun, the muzzle flash, the atmospherics, the dirt, the shell ejection. Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and jump right into the t <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, three, two, one, action. Pyro. Alrighty guys, so here we are in good old Adobe After Effects. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is instead of showing you guys step by step by step by step and showing you each numerical value that I type in to do all this stuff, I'm gonna show you guys more in a layer based fashion, if that makes any sense. So I'm just gonna go layer by layer and show you guys what I did to try to achieve this somewhat realistic gun effect as opposed to compositing the entire shot over the course of an hour and a half. So I'm gonna try to make this a pretty short and condensed tutorial with a lot of information. So with that said, let's go on ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is solo this clip and we're gonna start from scratch. So the first thing that I did is I added some temporary color correction to the shot. So I just did some Lumetri color, added the temperature, made it higher, added some contrast, dropped the shadows a little bit because that's kind of a, for me, the shadows, they aren't necessarily blacks. It's kind of more of a gamma range in Adobe After Effects. And then drop the blacks a little bit. Of course, we have a little S curve going on and yada yada. So that's kind of the first thing that we did is just kind of add a temp color grade to your shot. Um, and that kind of depends on your workflow. Some of you guys might like compositing and log. Personally, I don't want to composite my elements and log. I kind of want to throw on a temp color grade so I could do the effects and composite those effects to this temp color grade. And so because they're composite to this temp color grade, when I do the real color grade in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, the effects, uh, the coloring won't be off and it won't be shifted or there won't be any uh, moray or aliasing or um, macro blocking or anything, any, any kind of banding or any issues like that. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. So what we have right here is the first thing that I did is I kind of duplicated some of these bullet ricochets. Nothing fancy at all. I just took a frame grab of the original footage and I just kind of composited additional little uh, bullet ricochets on top just to kind of make it look like there's a bunch of bullets hitting all over the place. As you can see, I didn't take the time to composite some of the pyro. So luckily the cable is orange, it kind of blends in with the rock. But if you look really closely, you can see all the, the pyrotechnics cable kind of bouncing all over the place there. Okay, so the next thing I composited in are flash effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsolo those. So what these are, they're just essentially white solids that I turned into either classic color dodge or hard light. And another reason why I went on ahead and did some flash effects is because I knew once I hit the sound design process, I'm gonna be mixing a bunch of uh, bullet ricochet sounds and bullet sounds hitting the rocks and everything like that. So these little sparks right here, like boom, boom, goes a long way to make it seem like there's bullets kind of bouncing all over the place over here. So it goes a long way just to kind of simulate like boom, boom, like that. So th those are just the little, little details that go a very long way. So the next thing that I went on ahead and did is I went to my original shot and I went on ahead and did a 3D camera track. So the reason I did a 3D camera track is because there's gonna be a lot of three-dimensional elements floating around in three-dimensional space. So for example, if you guys remember, I start to walk in towards the actor and then he starts firing. So because we have a little, it's not necessarily a parallax, but because the camera is gonna be moving in Z space, I need to do a 3D camera track versus a 2D or 2.5D um, planner track. So I just went on ahead and did a simple camera track. I do have a tutorial on how to do that. The link is in the uh, <laughs> the link is in the description below. Okay, so the next step is to composite some additional smoke, debris, and atmospherics into the scene. And so with that, I used these 4K dust swirl effects, and you guys could purchase those at DeadNationFilms.com which you can find right here. They have a lot of great 4K 
assets. They had anything from pre key dust swirls to muzzle flashes to flames, smoke, flog, gore, all that kind of fun stuff. So you guys will find that in the description below. So essentially what I did is once the pyro went off, I just kind of composited a lot of additional dirt just to kind of fill in the scene because when you got 10 to 12 uh, dudes with AK-47s firing at you, there's going to be a lot of dirt floating around in the scene. So that's just a simple trick. And I just went on ahead and made that a 3D layer, added motion blur, added motion blur, and just kind of put that into the scene, hence why we did the 3D camera track. So if you look at this layer, it is kind of bouncing with the camera and it is moving with the camera. So that is the entire purpose of that 3D camera track. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. So now we're gonna start compositing these gun effects. So the first thing that I did is I brought in some good old fashioned action essentials with the muzzle flash straight 09 effect. And with this one, and when you do a little bit of studying, for me, I kind of wanted to try to go for more of a realistic look. So I didn't want there to be an actual muzzle flash every single time he pulls the trigger. Because one, guns do emit a muzzle flash, but when your camera is exposed for the daylight, it's not always visible. And also when you're shooting at 24 frames a second, you're not always gonna be able to see the muzzle flash. So a good example of that is if we were to watch Black Hawk Down right here, of course these guys are using blanks for this scene. So this is a great example of how you don't actually see the muzzle flash every single time they fire their gun. So here's a good example. And that's about as realistic as you can get. As you can see, they had the shell ejections, they had the smoke, obviously they're shooting blank, so the atmospherics and everything kind of went with the gun. But this isn't a blank, this is an airsoft gun, so we kind of got to do our best here. So the first thing that I did is, of course, I threw in this muzzle flash straight. And so instead of actually showing the muzzle flash right here, which obviously looks very terrible, I trimmed the first frame out and I just wanted to see the smoke which is why that is also in 3D space. So that smoke kind of works around with the camera tracking data. And then the next thing I did after that was I composited a shell ejection, which is also from Action Essentials. I did the eight millimeter underscore O2. I put it in 3D space so it moves with the camera. And this is very simple. It's just an easy animation of the shell flying away. It's not the biggest deal, but it's all the little details that count when you're doing an effect like this. So if you just see very slightly in the peripheral, you just kind of see it leave, which is really good. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the third right here. So this one is a little bit more complex. So the first thing that I went on ahead and did is of course composite in the muzzle flash. So we'll unsolo that. So this is just the smoke. So when he fires, it's boom, just get a little bit of smoke going right there. Now the second thing that I did is composite the actual muzzle flash itself which is the AR-15 angled. And I went on ahead and got this from actionvfx.com. You guys can go to their website and check out their assets. And the good thing is, is most of their stuff is 50% off. It's not even a sale, they just cut their prices in half. So I would definitely jump on that. These are great assets and you can get everything, I think for $30, which is amazing. And so the way I composited this is if we click on here, it's very simple. I added a curves, went into my alpha, and I just kind of brought that up just a little bit. And in order to make this muzzle flash imperfect, because obviously the original one was a bit like that. So I added a quick mask around the muzzle flash and just kind of cut out the bottom just because, you know, it's coming out of a gun. It's not supposed to be perfect. And then I also added a directional blur because we don't want it to be completely sharp. I mean, you could, but this scene was filmed at a relatively sh uh, was filmed at a relatively slow shutter speed. It was filmed at 180 degrees or 148th of a second if you're shooting on DSLR. So you know it was pretty blurry. So I went ahead and added some directional blur, and it kind of just softens it too. I feel like it makes it a little bit more realistic. Alrighty, and then here's the next thing: is compositing the next cell ejection right out of the chamber right there. Just animate the shell leaving the gun. But here's the thing. Obviously this isn't a blank, so the shell isn't, you know, oops, not the shell. The chamber of the gun isn't actually opening right there. It's not ejecting any shell. So what I did, a trick that I found out that works, is, is when you color correct this part right here, the gun, it almost makes it look like the chamber is opening and closing. So the way I did that is if I go here, I'll also solo this. So I just went on ahead and duplicated the footage, created a mask, and then with this mask, I just kind of did a, I just kind of did a rectangle mask where the chamber would be, 
and then I just darkened it. So it almost just makes it look like that's the inside of the gun. And then I just animated it one frame, so page down, animated it to look like it's closing and closing. So it looks like, it's like boom, open, close, closed. And then when you go on ahead and composite the shell on top of that, it looks like you have a shell that is ejecting out of the gun. Of course, we gotta add that little bit of a flash. So this right here is just a little bit of illumination from the muzzle flash. So when he fires the gun, it obviously it's gonna brighten up the entire scene. So once again, hard light, just a little bit of a yellow flash. Boom, perfect. And this isn't necessary, but it's something that I like to add because I have the effect. I like to add a little bit of heat distortion. So you can get that from videocopilot.net and it's a nice touch. It just kind of adds a little bit of a ripple in the atmosphere. So if I go on ahead and click that, you can see it just ripples the muzzle flash and it just ripples the atmosphere ever so slightly. And I feel like it just gives it a really realistic look. And my settings for the heat distortion where I had it set on fire, 16, 84, 50, 100, and one. And to be honest, you can really mess around with this because it's, it's only gonna be on frame. It's only gonna be on screen for one frame. So you can even go to smoke. And I feel like that is, that's very extreme. But as long as you're just kind of getting a little bit of ripple in the atmosphere, I feel like you're kind of getting your point across. And as for this final one, I did the same thing as before. I went on ahead and just added a little bit of smoke. I didn't show the actual muzzle flash itself. So when he fires it, you just see a puff of smoke. And then I also added just a little bit more smoke just to bring it, make it a little bit more prominent. Like boom, a little bit of smoke's coming out. Once again, they're 3D, so they're tracked to the camera. So once again, I added just another flash right there to kind of simulate the fact, actually, that's a little hot. So I'll turn that one off. And so, yeah, so I added another flash right here just to kind of make it seem like there was a muzzle flash, but the camera didn't pick it up. So it's just kind of like, boom, boom. Very subtle. And the same thing right here. We essentially just duplicated the same thing. So if I were to take out this, so it's the same thing as before. Once he pulls the trigger, open up the chamber so it kind of looks like the chamber is open right there and then animate it to close and then we can throw on the shell effect of course you want to make sure you have the motion blur on and it, once again it's just a very very subtle effect all right guys i know that was a lot of talking and a lot of information to take in at one time but let's go ahead and see what the final effect looks like Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something or a tip or two from it. Or if you didn't, sorry. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. My name is Justin Nelson with Happy Fox Productions. If you want to see any uh, behind the scenes content or anything like that, feel free to follow me on my social media. That information is below in the description. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.